I mean, first of all, he's 16. And both of us, our family, don't have any type of uh, family history of cancer. When they told us that, yeah, this is cancer, you know, I felt like I was hit by a truck. <laughs> Started is his face, yeah. swelling of his neck and face. Yeah. I had to go, you look, you know, you look and so skinny. Why is your face swollen and your neck? And then I just started measuring it. That can't be. And also his right. breathing too. He was, yeah. he keeps saying that he can't catch, he can't, yeah. can't catch his breath, but he was breathing fine. And sometimes and his heart rate would be elevated, you know, yeah. it's high. Cause I yeah. check his pulse, I go. It's something strange, and then sometimes it's normal. Uh, at first, it was, yeah, a swollen neck, and it was kind of hard to breathe. Yeah, my neck, it kept getting bigger every day, so then we decided, you know, we have to go to the hospital and see what's wrong. And, you know, before that, I, was, I hanged out with my friends, so I thought it was like COVID. We were saying, I told you not to go out with your friends. Yeah. See, and this is what happens. You're hanging we really, out. We really thought he, he, he caught COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know. Oh, he had a fever. Emergency. That's right. Yeah. And he also has a low grade fever. The it's not very high. The first thing Kaiser did was, mm -hmm. oh, we need to give you a COVID test, mm -hmm. right? And we'll know within 24 hours. You know, it came back the next day negative. But, yeah. Okay. And then he coughed and he had a little blood, a streak of blood in his phlegm. And that's when he called yeah. the doctor back and did a video and showed the doctor and mm -hmm. then so that doctor was very concerned okay you need to come back to you need to come to the er yeah. right away they did some scan they, they saw something chest, chest x-ray and it's oh, suspicious and then oh you need to do a ct scan yeah you know she knew it was serious mm -hmm. when after the ct scan they came in with leads you yeah know, they put leads on, on yeah. Thomas chest and something's you know, going on they're there for six hours till we find out. And then mommy called me and says, you know, I mean, she was upset. Yeah. Right. She was, uh, she was in tears, and and she tells us, she tells me that, oh, they found a mass, mm -hmm. and you know, and of course she she says that you know they they think it's cancer, and so I told you know mommy and Thomas, hey, don't worry about it. This is just something. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and, and and find out what it is. I was on a call with my girlfriend. I don't know what we were doing. They're probably talking about homework or something. And then we were laughing. And I, I specifically remember that we were laughing and my dad knocked on the door and he said to me, uh, could, could you hang up the phone really quick? And I said, okay. And what's going on? Like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on. Like, it's something serious. And my dad says to me, like, I could tell he's like, you know, he's trying to collect his thoughts, like something is going into his head. And he told me that um, the doctors found like a mass, some kind of mass. Uh, near Thomas Hart. You know, they transported, you know, uh, Thomas and, uh, did you go there? Yeah. No, you didn't. No, no. Just Thomas. But they said it had to be critical, yeah. critical care transport. There's going to be a nurse, there's yeah. a respiratory therapist. You know. Because of his um, heart rate was going really high. Yeah. And, and even at that time, we mm -hmm. were like, okay, it's, it, and, it's probably going to be some kind of procedure. He'll, he'll be fine. So in the beginning, I was, we were making tacos. Yeah, I was cooking dinner. Yeah, we were cooking tacos. I remember I was eating my taco, and then I got a call from Baba on the phone. It was like 9 o'clock at night, I think. Yeah, 9 o'clock at night, I was eating taco, and Baba was like, all right, Mrs., call. And then he texted me, and he says, call me when you have a chance. And, like, he never really said, like. <laughs> I remember my or, mom. My mom joked, she's like, oh, it's, it's something serious, you better go call. Yeah, and then so then I called Baba and he said, uh, Thomas is in the emergency room. So we quickly ate and then yeah. we showered and we left home at like 10 o'clock. Yeah. And we lived four hours away, so we didn't get here. Yeah, we didn't here get until here until like, till like 2 a.m. 2 a.m. And we were just like hoping that it was just uh, something that they could fix in a couple of like days. When they finally told us definitively 
that yes, this is cancer. I mean, I literally could not speak mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. I, I, you know, I, I tried to get the word out and I just couldn't get it out. So Thomas was on FaceTime with me and he, after he found out the news, he told me and it was like a lot to process at first. Um, when I actually processed it, like it kind of made me sad because I was scared of like losing Thomas. When someone tells you something like that, that your son has cancer, you know, in that split second, you think that you're going to lose him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? All the hope and, and dreams, dreams and crazy. fear comes all at you. And says, oh my gosh, this we're not, not going to see him yeah. graduate, get married, have kids. That's it. You know, no <coughs> parents think that they're going to lose their child, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, when you're faced with that, you, you're just scared, frozen. Mm -hmm. You There's, can't control it. You you can't. You're 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 you know. All you think about is. And then. When you hear cancer, you think. Yeah. Oh, cancer means you're gonna die. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think like that was the most shocking, like, cause like you don't ever expect it to happen to someone you like, like your lo your loved ones, and also like you don't see it usually. Um, on people like young people you know normally it's like your elders or like you know like your grandparents maybe or you know things like that but you don't see it like on someone like like a teenager especially like someone who's healthy you know something uh like this never happened in our family as well so i never even thought about it you no know, cancer was the last thing in my mind me too, and I'm a nurse. We were right. giving all the right food, yep. eating organics, not too much um, chemicals. Yeah, we I didn't mean, want you know, any of those pesticides being used in the house, all those kinds of things. Yeah. To try to prevent us to get cancer as we get older, you know. I mean, 16 year old, we're more afraid of, you know, car accidents, mm -hmm. right? Um, some kind of accident with when they are out with their friends, friends or riding your bike, yeah, or scooter. I mean, you know, we're, we're more we're more you know concerned about that than oh, you know, we're concerned that you might have cancer. That's it's just not 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 in our radar. It was just like coming all at once, but I, I still couldn't really believe it. And when he went to his first round of chemo. That's when it really became real. <laughs> so first they had to do a biopsy on me and get my check my bone marrow to see if the cancer went in there. But luckily it was uh, nothing was in it. So then they put a pick in me where they could draw blood and put the chemo in. And after that they told us I had to do six sessions of chemotherapy, which is about like four months. And yeah, it was really hard, uh, at least for the first, the first session, cause um, yeah, n something like that never happened to me. Welcome. <laughs> It was, um, it, it was an eye opener. Yeah. You know, he came home, you know, we, we, you know, we came home kind of late. We were, we were thinking, oh, you know, mm -hmm. chemo's over now. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to have, we could come home and then, you know, we're just going to go back and, and do it. And after that, I got nauseous. Two hours later after he came home, you know, he threw up, I mean, it, it was violent. They went to the bathroom and he threw up more and more. Yeah, I was like, 
Dang it. It's like putting stress into me. We were rushing around the hell, like trying to help him. Literally, it looks like he was turning inside out. And that was just like the first round. So it was just gonna get worse from there. The first one was one of those that were like, let's, let's do whatever we can not to repeat that. It was pretty tough, but it was, it was really cool too because my brothers and sister-in-law, they, um, they set up like, uh, like a little party or like um, a banner for me. It said, welcome home, Thomas. So that was pretty heartwarming. I was actually there, so then like I got to shave the first like um, part, but overall like we knew it was gonna happen sooner or later. So like, oh, and before that, his hair was like falling off, like on his pillow, <laughs> and like everywhere, and so. I think it was good that he shaved it because like, I think he was like, he seemed ready for it and like, it was a good time. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really mind it because I knew it was gonna grow back. Yeah, I lost my eyebrows and eyelashes. I still have a little bit left, but yeah, it's not that bad. It was pretty cool too because um, yeah, I could wear beanies <laughs> and my hair wouldn't get in the way and I don't have to wash my hair. I felt free. My head felt pretty cold. I mostly wore beanies, but yeah, I felt what my dad felt. It was nice that like his brothers supported him and also like shaved their hair. Oh yeah, that was a pretty good moment because we just wanted to support him through like, oh yeah, we could do this too and like see us bald and him be, be like ha more happier. We shaved our heads just to show Thomas that we love him and oh my, we don't say to each other we love each other. But that was our way of saying that we love him and that we support him. And it was funny doing it. And we, we just wanted to show Thomas that we were there for him and that like, if he had to go bald and he had to suffer this, I mean, at least in some way me and Andrew can like kind of do the same thing. I think he kind of realized and then like, oh, my brothers are there for me. They shaved their heads for me and like, you know, they're, they're always supporting me. Because, you know, before this, like, the whole cancer thing, like, the way we communicate with each other, like, you know, we call each other names and we mess with each other, you know, kind of like the, like, sibling, like, love or whatever you want to call it. But, like, with this, it kind of just showed Thomas, like, no joke or no, no messing around. Like we are there for Thomas when he needs us. And I think, I hope he realized that. I think he did. I think he just felt that he wasn't alone going through this process and he has many people there to support him. Did you up in the morning? Yeah. Hmm. And now I feel better. I think the hardest part was after the treatment, I think, or like after all the treatments, because like, like Thomas would have to recover from them for a couple of days and it would take like um, sometimes even longer. I think it was after the fourth one, me and my dad went to go do some like some work at my grandma's house and then like all of a sudden Andrew came home and like Thomas is on the floor. We were at Costco. We were at Your Costco. Mom was at work. My mom was at work. Thomas, I guess you guys. Thomas was at home. He was okay. Thomas was at home and you guys. It was like a week after chemo so we thought he was like fine. Yeah. We got a phone uh, we call got a from phone your mom call. saying, yeah. Thomas isn't answering his phone. Uh, and Baba's not home. We're, can you go home right now and go see what's happening? Yeah. And we ran home. We drove home really fast and then we came home. And he was lying the door on the floor. In your near room. the bathroom, yeah. He was lying on the floor in a ball like this. Yeah, and throw and, uh, up in the trash can right next to him. And yeah, we didn't and know he, what was to like, do. he was like really cold and I felt him. And he was like shivering. And that was pretty scary. I tried to give him water and like I covered up him with blankets, gave him a heating pad, but yeah, he still was like he was just shivering and shivering and lying there and lying cold. Mm -hmm. This is for Thomas's IV dressing change. The nurse changes it once a week. It's a kit, sterile dressing, and this is uh, 
the solution blood thinning to help the line clear use every day as well as this saline for the nurse who uses to clear draw blood and these little green things are caps for his IV line you have to change it every day and some tea for the blood draw twice a week after each session I would have to um I would get mouth sores so I would have to do a lot of mouth washes to uh, make them go away yeah there was there was one point he was taking a lot he was taking Love. a pill to stimulate his appetite he was taking nausea you know, medicine it's the nausea Mostly medicine, the nausea was medicine huge right? to control the nausea that's the most yeah. important thing i mean and then uh, you know he he takes a um depending and how he, he was he takes all these antibiotic yeah to make sure that he doesn't get sick and then he has to take um, a blood thinner because yeah. he developed a blood clot. And yeah. I had to give him shots, which yeah. I hated. Shots in the belly, mainly. I mean, you know. For about, I, about a month. And right. the nurse came, which is a good thing. Yeah. Draw his blood. <laughs> you know, that Changes helped dressing. quite a bit. Yeah, or else we would have had to draw it ourselves and bring draw it, it to the lab. Bring it to, yeah. It was to, just hard to go through, see Thomas go through all those yep. procedures. It was just... So I mean, it was it was it was hard. It was brave. And, he was brave, and I that's mean, why everybody was surprised and yeah. liked him a lot because he seems I mean, a tough teenager. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you know, I mean, this is where, mm. as a parent, we're always pushing our kids. We're always pushing them to do better, to do better, to do better. Mm. Um, and then when Thomas gone through all of this, you know, even. I was taken back. I said, how tough. I always consider Thomas yeah. as the baby, right? Mm -hmm. He's the youngest yeah. of the three. Mm -hmm. And it's his skinny yeah. little body. Yeah. I feel like the chemo is, this chemo is going to eat him up. Yeah. How's he going to go through this? He's so thin and skinny. He seems so fragile. Yeah. But he yeah. came out. You know, at, then, like a champ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last chemo. Okay. <laughs> the hardest part through all of this was staying in the hospital for like the first sessions or second and knowing that you have to go through this, I don't know, how many more times, like four more. And, you know, knowing that you're going to be sick and you're going to have to take a lot of pills and they're going to have to stick you with needles. But after that, you don't really think about it anymore. What is it? His eyes are feeling... Are you dizzy? Okay, oh, you can lie sit down. Let's sit down there then. All right, come on. I think we should go to the emergency room now. Yeah. I don't think we should wait. Yeah. All right, come on. We'll just go sit down. Yeah. Okay. Look at you're telling, you're giving me. What do you want to do? What's the matter? We're good. Give me the bag. Mm. Get the bucket. Yep. Yeah. I remember saying, to my dad that, you know, I didn't want to go, but you know, that wasn't an option. I had to keep going anyways. So Thomas has been having a fever since Friday, um, but yesterday and today it's been as high as um, 102.4, or just now is 101.7. He's still taking deep breaths and stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna go because I don't think it's gonna improve. So his temperature is 102. Point. We gave him Tylenol at 10. Yeah. 10 to 10, right? 
Yeah, ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, maybe yeah, a little before, before ten. ten. Yeah. And I remember one time, I think it was like the third chemo, mm-hmm. and and um, Thomas in the car. It was just Thomas and I, and he was like, you know, my mom, I'm, I'm I'm really tired. And I told him, I said, you know, I'm he told me, um, he's tired. Mm-hmm. He was tired. Yeah. And um and I told him, I said, you know, I know. Because I'm tired. Mm-hmm. If I'm tired, oh my gosh, you must be really tired. Mm-hmm. My mom and dad were probably thinking the worst. So I did see them get emotional. And I think, yeah, that was the first time I saw them get emotional, at least at the age I remember. But yeah, it's pretty hard when you see a family member get emotional and you rather you rather let yourself get emotional than than them we're lucky mm-hmm. that you know our family is has a good support system yeah i think everybody right. just talking to him on the phone yeah impo you, mama yeah. Andrew and Sierra, Sierra, the minute they found out, oh, yeah. they drove three yeah. hours home mm-hmm. just to make sure, hey, you know, we'll, we're going to come in, make sure yeah. everything is okay. If you guys need anything, they were there. Yeah, Leia and Kenny. You know, and, 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 and that's, that's one of the biggest things yeah. that, that... And Phoebe Kennedy came. Yeah. And he came home, everybody. Yeah. So that it, brought it, his spirits up. It, we're lucky in that sense that our family was not by any means dysfunctional, yeah. right? I mean, you know, we're a close-knit family, and I think this is what kind of carries. Yeah, and like through. yeah, um, Sierra's mom, Gina, mm-hmm. and her friends from the church. Mm. I mean, parishioners yes. brought food yeah. for like a, oh, after no, I mean, even they, the they, second they, chemo. Yeah, they, they, they did this um, they didn't even know us. prayer circle. Yeah. And, and they, you know, we never gone to their church, but they had people That helps so much. Yeah. And these people actually just yeah. says, you know what? We don't know. We know mm-hmm. you're going through some tough time. We want you to make sure, sh- we want you to know that our thoughts and prayers are with you. In the past, people say thoughts, thoughts and, and prayer prayers. Is, <laughs> is, is, is cheap, right? You know, we we don't want your thoughts in prayer, but but in instances like this, those thoughts and prayer is very much appreciated. Yeah, my family and my friends and my girlfriend were the most that helped me get through this. Cause you don't really think about it when you're having a lot of fun. They supported me a lot and took my mind off things. Thomas still have not met with any of his friends mm-hmm. through this entire process because we're like, no. I would forego Thomas seeing, you know, Sok Sok and, and Tita and Kennedy and Phoebe, right? Um, you know, cousins and an uncle. Celine was a must. Celine was the one person that was always, she's always with me all the time. So I don't know what, without her, I don't know what it would be like. I tried my best to like be supportive and like help him in like any way he needed help. So like I could go to his house and like, you know, like cheer him up a bit. Celine have demonstrated to us that, you know, She's part of this family, and she also played a intricate part to Thomas's mental health. 
we still got to see each other every week and it was actually it seemed like we got closer in a way you know her family um they're supporting me as well and um i guess they, i think they knew that i needed someone like celine uh to comfort me and even mentally we got closer and we knew that we could get through this and it made us stronger it was very clear to me mm -hmm. that um that Celine was giving him this nurturing um, that, that we couldn't give him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like where mommy was my biggest support through this entire thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, mommy says that I was her and biggest vice support. Versa. And, and for Thomas and Celine, even though they, they you know, I, I think what um, this May is their second anniversary. They have oh, proven yeah. themselves to be that already to each other. As like people say, like when you go through like hard times, it ma it like makes you stronger. Thomas, last day. What do you want to say? I want to say thank you for. Taking taking such good care of me. <laughs> Let me see your arm. You got your lines pulled. No more. Yeah, free. Yeah. Not time down. Free at last. Free at last. No more. <laughs> Hospital Another. room. It's IV. <laughs> what do you want to say, dear? We're done. I will never have to revisit this thing again. The the best advice I could give, you know, family who is going through this or will be going through this is, you know, there is really no question, you know, um, too Don't, stupid to ask. Yeah. And ask. You, you, you can't blame yourself. Yeah. Stay strong and, you know, you can fight this. Talk to people about it. It just helps to talk to someone, let it out. Of course, like follow the treatment plan and like don't give up. Always have hope. Have hope in your doctor that will treat you for other parents, you know, accept the help and ask questions. Yeah. And do some, if you can, do your research. You need to take care of yourself. Yeah. To take care of your child. Well, Value your time with your family because you never know what's going to happen. Try your best to have like a support system because like those people I think like mean the most. And to the people that are there for them, you know, I like, just try to support them in any way they can and just try to help each other take care of each other and always find something to do to keep them busy and i know it's going to be hard but uh, once you get through it then you're going to be much more happy take it all in and do the best you can, do the best I mean, you it's, can it's, and, uh... and hope for a positive outcome